So uh, let's have a look on the hands-on now. So what we will do. First, I would like to show you some tools to debug the signal processing. And actually, how uh, do we do? So what we will need for this, we will need our discovery board. We will need uh, the microphones which are embedded here. So we will use these two MEMS microphones, which are about 2.1 centimeters apart. And this will be our audio source, okay? Then we were speaking about the necessity to have uh, audio, well, uh, anti-aliasing filter. This is embedded in the codec. So there is a hardware codec just on the next close to the jack inputs. Then the signal is digitalized and coming to the F7, okay, through SAI interface. So then we get the real data and uh, we will process it and send it back to the audio uh, output, which is also the codec. And you can listen the processed data or process audio on the headphones. And that's all we need from the hardware side. But from the software side, how to work with the DSP or how to debug it? If you are using any of the currently mostly used IDEs running ARM devices, you can't really visualize the signals. Okay? In most of them, uh, what you can get in maximum is the memory window where you see uh, very nice numbers like this. And it doesn't tell you really what your signal look like. So uh, first of all, when you want to evaluate or something, you need to see it. Okay, so how to see this, uh, the signal, how to debug it, and how to simulate uh, the DSP functionalities before you start implementing it into the processor. Uh, we will cover this right now. So we started with the fact that actually you are not able to read this. And uh, most of the IDs doesn't offer any means of visualization. And if they do, they don't have any subsequent software to make the DSP simulations. So the only option usually is to export this data and to use any other tool to, to process it. So something what we want to achieve is like this. So to see instead of uh, this memory array, to see a sine wave or whatever is inside the signal. And then you can do some evaluation, simulation on this signal, because you want usually to simulate the real signals, not some artificial sign which you can generate like this, but the real signal which you get out of your microphones to see what happens if you do filtering, if you do FFT, if you do whatever. So for this, usually uh, you use DSP processing software like MATLAB, which is kind of uh, uh, first class software or Scilab Octave, which are the mostly the clones, usually for free open source community. Or just for uh, basic evaluation or visualization, you can use a spreadsheet software or any other software which can visualize uh, raw data. For our workshop purposes, we have chosen the Scilab, which is a very nice tool in terms of a uh, few points. First of all, uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's uh, completely open source. Then uh, you can download it here, but we have provided it on the, in the package. It is quite easy to install, 120 megabytes, it, and it has very good online help, which is also available offline in the installation. And the installation take uh, just a few minutes. So if you haven't done it yet, please install it now. It is in the PC tools Scilab exe and depends if you have 64 bit or 32 bit variant of the OS uh, please select the correct one and uh, once installing be sure you check this installation without internet connection it shall be faster than it it's not trying to connect all the time to get updates so please go through the installation now because we will use it in the first uh, hands-on so what we will need in to export the, uh, the signal. 
Well, maybe first of all, we should consider that usually the DSP is working on the buffers. So in our audio example, we are sampling, uh, I think, 5, 12 samples of the audio signal inside the internal memory. Then we got an interrupt, and we do the processing over this buffer of 5, 12 samples. Okay, this is quite a common approach, and usually use the double buffering scheme. So you, go, you acquire one buffer while you are processing the other buffer, and then the buffer swap. So usually what you want to have is the picture of one buffer. It's usually quite enough to evaluate the signal, but depends on the signal frequency and the signal uh, properties. So in our case, we will uh, let the code running, which is running in an endless loop, waiting for the interrupt when the buffer is full. Then we can put a breakpoint, and we will be sure that at that time we have one buffer filled in in our memory. Then we can export it from IR and load it to the Scilab. Uh, exporting from any tool is usually possible through hex file, binary files, and so on, or CSV, for example. In IR, which we are using today, uh, we have prepared a set of macros which will ease our life a little bit. Because normally you can do memory save manually, but it will uh, take some time to do it every time you make a new acquisition. So I have prepared, we have prepared a macro which is called my, my memory safe and shall be in the macro quick launch in our example. When you double click the blue arrow, you will get outputted some code or some data. We will acquire this data into Scilab and uh, at the first point we should get a picture like this, but for sure not with the sine wave but the real wave which is coming from our microphones. So this will be our starting point to do any processing because first we need to know what is in our buffer, what we have acquired. So we can leave it on the background and we can start with the IR project, which is uh, this one. It's 06 DSP audio. And uh, please, you can open it now. In this project, we will basically not change anything. Everything is done already, and we will just change some configuration or some flex, more or less. Well, this project is a little bit more uh, complex. So I will first uh, introduce you a little bit the main while loop, what is what is happening inside. So uh, we can analyze a little bit the main loop, just the main uh, points. After the initialization, we enable some things like cache, for example. Then we enable the LCD to show also the signal on the LCD as a side effect. And then we just start our board support package uh, with audio in and out streams. Okay, so starting from this point, I'm getting uh, audio stream from the microphones to my RAM by the DMAs. And also I'm sending out the same RAM content to the headphones. So it's running completely on the background via the DMA to the uh, serial audio interface. Then I have some initialization of the filtering functions, but we don't care right now. And this is my processing loop. In my never ending loop, I just ask if my buffer is filled. Okay, this variable is set up in a interrupt of the DMA. So every 512 cycle, 512 samples, I will get this uh, variable set up and uh, I'm doing double buffering. So here I decide which uh, buffer I'm going to process, if it's buffer one or buffer two. And then because the, the codec is sending the data in the form of left and right channel multiplexed in time, I would like to have two arrays, one with the completely left channel and right, right array with only the right samples. So this is what I do here. I just create two arrays with the length of 512.
So every five class samples I got interrupt, then I got this flex set. I decide which buffer I'm going to treat right now. And I do left and right, okay? And starting from this, I can do what I, what I want. So let's uh, stop here. And uh, we just uh, want to see what is in these buffers. So what are our data? Uh, then you can compile and run and debug by this button. So uh, if you succeed to uh, compile and run, you should get an application like this, uh, something on the screen which is uh, showing the time uh, domain of the audio signal on the screen. Okay, having the signal on the screen is quite sexy, but you can't really evaluate it because it's changing quite, quite fast, isn't it? So uh, at some point you want to stop and you want to evaluate the signal in a more, let's say, more professional way. So that's why we have this line in the code. If it's running, uh, you can put breakpoint here okay. at line 229. And once uh, the, um, the software is running, you can put a breakpoint, okay? On ARM, you can put a breakpoint while the software is running. And once you have step here, we are sure that we are in the processing or the, the hardware is stopped at the process of full buffer, okay? For sure you can stop anytime, but then you can have half buffer full and half buffer empty. So it's better to uh, put a breakpoint at this point when we are sure uh, we got the full buffer without any troubles. So in the watch window, uh, you should have already pre-selected the left channel. So you see my left channel is full of numbers, but uh, that's basically all you can guess. There is uh, some numbers inside. So now we would like to export this data and import to some software which can visu visualize it. So for this, we have prepared the macros in the macro quick launch. And if you double click this memory save, it will effectively take the left and right buffers and save it as a hex files. Short hex files, uh, each buffer has one file. These files are saved uh, on your project location. Once you did this, you should have the left hex and right hex generated next to your project, okay? The size should be about three kilobytes for each buffer. To launch the macro, you need to double click to the arrow directly, okay? If there is a result zero, it went fine. Okay, so we've got generated, we have exported the data. So the last step is just to, to import it to, to the Scilab. And uh, for this, uh, if you double, there is a file Scilab process one, which is a script file for Scilab. And normally if you double click it, it should open the Scilab. So you should get the editor of the, of the script files inside the, the Scilab. Here, uh, if you press F5, it will execute the script. And uh, this is the result what you should get, something like this, with the audio signal which was around your board at the time when you hit the breakpoint. So I guess you, you recognize it's very copy-paste uh, MATLAB clone, okay? So you've got, for those who haven't worked with this kind of software, you can usually work with this in the console mode, so you type the commands you want to do, or much better is that you have a script where you put the same commands, but you can generate uh, more commands at the same time. And uh, then you can run at, uh, as a batch file. So uh, very briefly, what is in this uh, Scylla process one inside? Uh, first of all, I define some variables like length of my buffer, speed of sound and sampling frequency, which is 16 kilohertz in our case. And then the main thing is that I open 
my left and right files and I read it to left and right uh, variables inside this software. And all I do is I just plot them in one screen. Okay? And I put some legend around. So very easily by this software you are able to load the data from external files and you are able to visualize it in quite a nice way. So in this uh, figure we have both channels, uh, left and right, but you see they are mostly the same because uh, the microphones are clo quite close to each other and they are acquiring the same audio signal. Right now we are able to actually communicate between the STM32 and our simulation software. So first of all I'm able to visualize my signal. This is the, the first starting point you always need to perform. And then now if you want to do any algorithm with the CMC's library or whatever software in the STM32, you probably want to check if the algorithm is working properly. Okay. How to check this is usually that you use such a software like MATLAB, SILAB or whatever to work with the same signal, pass it through the same algorithm in the PC which has infinite length of the word almost. You can use whatever algorithm you would like with the power of the PC. Then you take the result and you can compare with the result what you get in the STM32 or in DSP in any micro. If you get the same result you are lucky, you are happy, everything works well. We have succeeded to make the first part just importing the, the signals into our device.